In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to make this relaxing lava lamp looping animation, and we're going to be rendering this with Blender EV. Now to create the effect of the melted wax in the lava lamp, we're going to be using these really cool objects called meta balls. And you can see when I bring the meta balls close together, they start to join together and to connect. So that's what we'll be using to create that effect. And if you'd like to purchase the finished tutorial files, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And after this tutorial, if you'd like to learn how to create more looping animations, you can also check out my Blender looping animations tutorial playlist. Link to that is in the description. All right, so here I am in Blender and I will have my screencast keys right down there in the corner so you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So I'm just going to select everything and we'll just delete everything. And it'll go to the add menu and to create the lava lamp, we're going to start by adding a cylinder. Now I want to model this closer to the real life scale in Blender and the default objects are quite large when you add them. So I'm going to scale this object down and I'll type 0.1 and then hit enter so it's much smaller and then I'll press control A and just apply the scale so that's the object's new default size. And let's go into edit mode. So I'll press 1 on the numpad to go to front view and I'm going to start by going into wireframe, deselecting everything and I'll just click and drag to box select the top part and we're going to scale this top part up a bit. Then I'll box select the bottom part and we'll scale it down. And we'll bring it up on the z-axis like that and then I'll zoom in here and I'll hit the I key to inset just inset it down a little bit and then I'll extrude it down on the z-axis just a little then I can extrude it out and then I will scale it and we'll scale up just a little bit so that we kind of have like a little crevice right in there so let's zoom out and I'll hit E to extrude we'll extrude that way down this is the bottom part of the lava lamp kind of the base and then we'll scale this part up and this part will scale up a little bigger than this and I'll bring it down a little bit farther on the z-axis like that I can also box Click the top part and I think I will scale it in a little bit and bring it up slightly. So that's the bottom part of the lava lamp. Let's also select the entire thing and bring it up on the z-axis so it is resting there on the grid. So I'm going to go back to the solid view and I'm going to navigate up here and I'm now going to create the top part of the lava lamp. So I'll go to the face select, we'll just select this face and I'll press shift D to duplicate, bring it up on the z-axis and we'll just make the top part right up here. We can scale it down a little bit and then we can extrude it. We'll extrude that up and scale it down even more, something like that. Then we'll We'll select this face here. We're going to hit I to inset. We'll just inset it a little bit so you can see the lip on the outer edge, but then we'll delete this face. We'll delete the faces so that it is hollow. Let's do the same thing down here. So we'll select this, hit I to inset, scale that down, X to delete. We'll delete the faces. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And then we can adjust the size of this and where it is in a moment. So we're now going to be modeling the glass piece, and then that'll give us a better idea for where this top part actually needs to be. And you can, of course, look at reference images, definitely look at reference images to kind of get at the shape that you want. So I'll go back to object mode and I'll go to the add menu and let's add a circle. So we'll add a new circle and then we'll scale this way down and bring it up on the Z axis. And then again, because we scale it down, we'll press control A and just apply the scale. Let's also save the Blender file. So if you haven't saved it yet, you can click on file and click on save and just save your project. And then once you save the project, just press control S as you're working on it to save it. All right, so I'll press one on the numpad to go to front view. Let's go into edit mode and I can scale this up and we'll bring it down a little bit. So then I'll go here to the vertex select. We'll hit E to extrude. We'll bring it up on the Z axis and then we'll scale the whole thing down just a little bit and stick it right in there. All right, let's deselect that. We'll go down here, hold down the alt key, select that loop of vertices there. We'll go back to front view and I can extrude it down on the Z axis and then we'll scale it in a bit until it fits. All right, so something like that. So once you get this to the size that you like, then we can adjust the top part here. So I think I like a size like that, although I might just make it a little bit taller. So just kind of get it to the size that you like. And also right in here, you can see there's a tiny little lip there and I want that lip to be there. So if I go back into wireframe and just box select this bottom part and go back to solid view, I could scale up this bottom part just a little bit so there's just a small lip there. It looks like we also need to recalculate the normals because you can see the dark shadow there on the mat cap is over here. So select everything with the A key and you can press shift N to recalculate the normals. All right, that is good. Let's go back to object mode and we can select the metal piece again and we'll go back into edit mode and I can go to front view and we are going to go into the wireframe view and I can just box select the bottom part here. Let's bring it up and then scale it down a little bit. Box select this top part here and scale that up a little bit. 
All right, go back to solid view, go back to object mode, that's looking pretty good. And also right here, you can see there's just a small little lip there. So let's press Control S to save this again. So I now wanna add a bevel modifier to the object. So I'll click on this object here. We'll click on add modifier and we can search for the bevel modifier and you can drag this amount up to make it bigger. And I will turn the segments maybe to like a three and then I'll use the object context menu and I'm gonna use the shade auto smooth. So let's now select the glass object and we'll go into edit mode and we're just gonna add a manual bevel right here. So I'll hold down the Alt key and select that loop of vertices. I'll press Control B and then I can drag my mouse out and then I can scroll my mouse wheel. We're just going to make maybe like five cuts. So then just click right there to place it. I'll go back to object mode and then use the object context menu and we'll shade auto smooth. So we can now create those bubbles of wax inside the lava lamp. So I'll go to the add menu and let's go down here and add the meta ball. We're going to add the metal ball ball. All right, so when you add it, it's quite large. So we're just gonna scale it way down and we can bring it up here inside the lava lamp. Let's also select the glass piece and just press the H key just to hide the object for now. And then later on, we can unhide it. So we'll select the ball here. We'll scale this meta ball down. And then if you click right here to go to the object data properties, you can see there is a resolution viewport and render. So if you click and drag this value, you can see it's really low quality or it's higher quality. Now, something to be aware of is that if you turn the viewport really high up and then you scale the object up really big or add a new object which is much larger there's going to be so much detail that it will really lag blender and it might crash blender so make sure you don't turn this up too high especially if you have a larger object but i do want to turn this up pretty high because i want it to look smooth so i think that a resolution of 0 0.05 on the viewport and render is pretty good so you can see it is pretty smooth and also when i select the meta ball and duplicate it you can see that i do want it to be quite smooth so that it looks like the melted wax is smoothly being separated from the other balls of wax. So I'll just delete that one there. All right, so I now wanna create some little bits of the wax which are on the bottom and the top, and then we're gonna have some balls in the middle. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate, bring it down on the Z axis, and I can scale it down on the Z axis to make it more flat, and then we'll scale the whole thing up, and we're just gonna stick it down here at the base of the lava lamp. So just kind of stick it right there, something like that. And then I'll duplicate this and we'll bring it up on the Z axis and I'll scale this down and we'll bring it up a little bit so that you can just see a little bit of the wax on the top. So there's kind of like a little base here on the top and the bottom with wax. All right, and then we can have some spheres here in the middle. So I'm gonna do five different spheres. So I'll go to front view and I'm gonna scale this down here. We're gonna have like two big ones. So I'll duplicate this. Maybe have two big ones here. Then we're gonna have two smaller ones. So I'll duplicate this. We're gonna make a few small ones. And if it's acting a little bit laggy in the viewport, you can see as I move this around, it's just a little bit laggy. If you wanna fix this, the resolution viewport, you could just turn this up. So you can see if I turn it up to like a 0.1, now it's moving much more smoothly. Um, if I move this around, the viewport is smoother. And you can see if I zoom way into the metal ball, zoom really close, you can kind of see that there's like some edges there, some distortion, um, but that's fine because the render is still gonna be at 0.05. So we'll just do that. So it's smoother in the viewport. So then we'll just duplicate one more of these. I'll put is kind of right up here and this is going to be a medium sized one so we have two small ones here a medium one and then two large ones so i'll go to the add menu and we're going to model a backdrop so i'll go to mesh and we'll add a plane and we're just going to make sure that the plane is brought down so that it's just going through the bottom of the lava lamp and I can go into edit mode and I can scale the whole thing up a little bit and I can also scale it on the y-axis and bring it forward. Then I'm going to select these two vertices here and I'll hit E to extrude, just hit Z to bring them up on the z-axis and then I want to add a bevel here to make a nice backdrop. So I'm going to select these two vertices and I'll press Control B and I'll drag my mouse out and then I can use the scroll wheel to add more cuts and just make that about that big. Go back to object mode and then we'll use the object context menu and we'll choose shade smooth so that background is smoothed and maybe scale the whole thing out a little bit on the Z axis. All right, I'm gonna hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view to see this in the rendered mode. And I'm gonna be using Blender EV. You could use cycles if you want to, but I've designed the materials and the lighting and I've kind of set everything up to work better for EV. And I've also chosen Blender EV because we are gonna be rendering quite a lot of frames. So in cycles, it will take a long time to render. So here on the rendering engine, I will just be using EV. And then to make EV look a little bit more realistic, here on the render samples, I'm gonna turn this up to like 100. So it uses 100 
100 samples. EV apparently does use samples, although I believe it works a little bit different than the cycle samples. And then also here, let's turn on ambient occlusion. We also want to turn on the bloom and the screen space reflections and the motion blur. And those settings will help to make EV look a bit more realistic. And while we're over here on the render settings, I'm going to go to the color management and I'm going to use the view transform of filmic and then I'll change the look to very high contrast and that'll pop out the colors and make things more saturated and contrasty. So now let's do some lighting because right now this is really dark. So I first want to add in an HDRI and I'm going to be using a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. I'll have the links in the description if you want to download the same HDRI that I'm using. So we'll go here to the world properties. We'll click on this yellow dot next to color and we'll choose environment texture and then we can click on the open button to open up the HDRI. And this is the HDRI that I'll be using. So it is called Abandoned Hall 01. And this is again from polyhaven.com. And I chose the 1K version, that's the size. And then I also chose the HDR version on Polyhaven. Again, link will be in the description if you'd like to download this. So I'll click on open image and I can see that we have some nice world lighting. And then here on the strength, I'm gonna turn it down to like a 0.4 because I don't want it to be quite that bright. So now we can add some area lights. So I'll go to the add menu and we'll go down here to light and we're gonna add an area light. Let's bring the area light up. We're going to rotate it over. Let's also rotate it back a little bit and bring it back here. So we're going to have one area light right here. Let's go to the area light settings. And on the shape here, I'm going to turn this to the rectangle and I'll drag the X and Y size. And I want to make it kind of like a long light. So it's giving a lot of lighting or reflections to the lava lamp. And then here on the color, I'm going to make this like an orangey reddish color. That'll look pretty cool. And then also the power here, I'm gonna turn this up to like a 30 so that it is pretty bright. So change that to a 30, there we go. So let's add a few more area lights. So I'll go to top view and I'll duplicate this area light and I'll rotate it over. We're gonna have another one over here on this side, a little bit more towards the back. Then I'll duplicate it again. We'll scale this one down and I'm gonna put another one here kind of on the back, which is pointing towards the lava lamp. And then I'll duplicate this again we're gonna rotate this one around. This one is gonna be pointed more towards the front. So just kind of stick it here, rotate that over. All right. And then this one, maybe I'll turn the power down a little bit to just like a 20, so it's a little bit less bright. And you may be wondering why I'm just adding all these lights around, but once we add all the materials, the metal and the glass is gonna reflect all the lights and it's gonna look cool. All right, so I'm gonna press Alt H to unhide the other objects, and then we can now do the materials. So I'm gonna select this object here. We'll go to the material panel. Let's click on new here to add a new material, and I can just call this metal. And then we're gonna create a basic procedural material for this. So let's click here to go to the shading workspace. And I will hold down the Z button, go back into the viewport mode or the rendered mode here in the viewport. So now that we're in the shading workspace, we have the shader editor right over here. So let's create a basic procedural material for the metal. So I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to add a noise texture. And then let's take the noise texture factor and we're going to put that into the roughness so that some parts are more rough and other parts are more shiny. And then also select the noise texture. I'm going to press control T and that is using the feature of the node wrangler add-on. So if you don't have the node wrangler add-on enabled, you can click on edit, you can go to the preferences, and then over here in the add-ons tab, if you go to the search, you can search for Node Wrangler and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So let's close the user preferences. So again, if you select the noise texture, you can then press Control T and it will add the texture coordinate and mapping. And I'm gonna use the object coordinates. So we'll put the object into the vector and the object coordinates will help to place the noise texture on the object more evenly. So to use the other feature of the Node Wrangler, I will hold down the Control and Shift key and then select the noise texture, and that way we'll actually be able to preview it on the object. So let's change some of the settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to like a 30, and then I'll also turn the detail up to the max of 15. And to make it a little bit more detailed, I will turn the roughness value to like a 0.8. All right, that's looking pretty good. So then we can control shift and select the principal shader again. And then let's take the base color here and we're gonna make it like a dark gray color. So you can actually see it better. So now you can see we have a really cool metal material um, and that noise really makes it more interesting. But then it doesn't actually look quite like metal yet. And that's because we need to turn the metallic value all the way up to one. So now it's actually gonna look like a metal material. 
Now I do want more control over the roughness, so I just need control over those colors. So let's go to the add menu and we can search for a color ramp and we'll put it between the noise and the principal shader. And then I can drag these values around to make it more contrasty. So I'll drag the black tab to about here. And then if I click on the color here, you can see if I make the color lighter, everything's gonna be more rough. But if I make it darker, everything's gonna be more shiny. So I'm just gonna make it kind of like a dark gray color. And then this white color here, this color is gonna be pretty light, but just a little bit darker. All right, so that metal material is looking really cool. And especially because of all those orange lights, we have these really cool orange reflections. Let's do the backdrop. So I'm gonna click on the backdrop and let's click here and we're actually gonna choose the metal, but then I wanna duplicate it so that it is a separate material. So I'll click on this button here to duplicate it and I can just call it like ground or backdrop, whatever you wanna call it. And then it's not gonna be metal, so we'll turn the metallic value to zero. And then we'll change a few of the settings. So this noise texture scale, I just wanna turn that to like a one. And I also wanna make it look a bit more rough. So I'll click on this gray color here and I'm gonna make this gray color a little bit brighter so that it is a bit more gray and that'll make it a bit less rough. So something like that. And then I wanna make it a bit darker. To make it a bit darker, we can first go to the base color. We can turn the base color down so it's a little bit darker, but then we can also open up the specular value. And if we turn this IOR value down, you can see it's not gonna reflect as much of the lights. So I'll turn the IOR down to like a 0.2, so it won't be quite as reflective because I really don't wanna focus on the backdrop. I wanna mostly be focusing on the lava lamp, so I don't want it to be too distracting. So now let's make the glass material. So we're gonna select this object here. This is the glass, so let's click on new to add a new material, and I can just rename this to glass. And I'm gonna be creating a special glass material because we're using Blender EV. So for the glass material, as well as using the principal shader, I also wanna to go to the add menu, and I wanna search for the transparent. Let's add the transparent BSDF right here. And then I wanna mix them together. So we'll go to the add menu, and I'm gonna search for a mix shader. And we'll put the mix shader in between the principal and the transparent. And I wanna put the principal into the bottom one, and then the transparent, we're gonna put that into the top one. So now to actually be able to see through the glass, we need to do a few more things. So let's go over here to the side panel and we're gonna go down here to the material settings. And we wanna open up this settings right here. And then we wanna to go to the blend mode and the shadow mode. And on the blend mode here, I'm gonna change this to the alpha blend. And this will allow the transparency to actually work so you can now see through the glass. And this is because we're using Blender Eevee, so we have to turn on this setting. And then on the shadow mode, I'm gonna change this to alpha clip. Now to further make this look like glass, I want the principal shader to be very reflective. However, I'm actually gonna make it very reflective by using the coat here. So we'll open up this coat here and we're gonna turn the weight to one. So this is gonna add like a coating of shininess on this shader. And then this roughness here, I'll turn it to zero so it's very reflective. So you can see this weight is basically gonna make this little reflective stuff all around the glass and that will make it look more like glass. And then also this roughness value here, we're gonna turn this roughness value all the way up to one because this is the roughness of the shader, but then this is the roughness of that coat. And then this IOR value, you can see if I turn the IOR way down, it's gonna kind of look more rough. It's not gonna have as many reflections. If you turn the IOR really far up, you can see it's very reflective. So this IOR, I will just turn it to like a two so that it's somewhat reflective. Now, I also wanna make it be kind of like an orangey color to look like there's that bright orange lighting there um, with the liquid and the wax. So what I'll do is go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for an RGB and we'll drop the RGB right here. Now, why I'm adding an RGB is because I want this color here and also the base color and also this tint here and also the emission. I want all of these colors here to be the same orange color. So to make this the orange color, let's make this a bit smaller so we have more space. So I'm gonna make this here an orangey color and then I'll make it really bright. And if you wanna use the exact same color that I'm using, then you can click on this color and you can go to the hex value and you can punch in FF 9 e Zero, zero. So now let's take the RGB color and we're gonna plug this into the transparent color, the base color, we're also gonna plug it into the tint here and then we're also gonna plug it into the emission because I'm actually gonna make the glass look a little bit emissive. Now technically with a real lava lamp, there's actually like some lights down here which are lighting it up, but because this is Blender EV, we kinda have to fake the lighting a bit and I've just found that this works best. So what I'm gonna do is turn this strength value to two. So this glass is technically gonna be emitting a little bit of light 
you can see with that bloom effect, it's kind of glowing a little bit. Now let's go back up here to the transparent and the principled and the mix shader. Now the mix shader is gonna change between only using the principled or only using the transparent. But what I wanna do is make it so that the edges are one shader and then the center is another shader. So we'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for the Fresnel node. So let's add the Fresnel. If I control shift and select the Fresnel, you can see the on the edges, it's gonna be more white and then it's gonna be black in the center. Now to control the colors better, I'm also gonna to go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for a color ramp. And we'll put the color ramp here after the Fresnel and we'll drag these over so I have a bit more space. And so we're gonna take the color ramp color and we're gonna put that into the factor to control where it's the principled shader and where it's the transparent shader. And then I can control shift and select the mix shader to preview it. Now to make this look a bit better, this IOR value, I'm gonna turn this to a 0.95, just a 0.95. You can see by turning that down, now you can see there's kind of like this glowing reflection here on the edges. If I control shift and select the color ramp, you can see what it's looking like. So it's mostly black, but then there's just a little bit of white on the edges. Now this white here, I'm gonna actually drag it way over so that there is more white. And I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna drag it really, really close to kind of about there. So now it's black in the center and then it's white over here. So now if I control shift and select the mix shader, you can see one shader's over here on the end and then the other shader's in the center. And if I control shift and select both of these shaders, you can see the transparent one, that is the one which is gonna be in the center because you can see it's more transparent. But then if I control shift and select the principled, the principled shader is kind of that glass which is reflective and is also emissive and that's gonna be on the edges. So it is more the principled on the edges and then more transparent in the center. And so that's how we're creating that fake glass. So now let's create the material for the wax. So I'm just going to select the glass. We'll press H to hide it. We'll just select one of these metal balls here. Let's click on new to add a new material. And I'll just rename this wax or you can rename it whatever you want. Now what's interesting about the meta balls object is that I only added this material to this ball here, but you can see by changing the color, it's actually added that material to all the different meta balls. But if it hasn't for some reason, you can select each one and then click here on the material dropdown and choose the wax. So for this wax material, I want it to be more red on the edges and then more orange in the center. So to do this, I will go to the add menu and we're gonna use that same Fresnel node, which we added earlier. So we'll choose the Fresnel node, drop it here, and then I'll control shift and select it to preview it. And you can see it's lighter on the edges and then darker in the center. So I wanna change the colors. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for a color ramp. Let's put the color ramp here after the Fresnel. And then this IOR value, I'm gonna turn this up to like a 12. So it's much brighter, but then I will drag these values together to make it more contrasty. So I'll drag this white tab kind of over here and I'll drag the black tab over here. But then the black tab, I'm gonna make this pretty bright and I'm gonna make it like a red color. And then in the center here, I'll click on this white color. And this one I'm gonna make really bright, but then I'll make kind of like an orangey color. So now let's put the color into the base color of the shader. I'll control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. I also wanna make the wax look shiny. So we'll turn the roughness to like a 0.3. And then I do wanna be able to see a little bit through the wax, I wanna make it look slightly transparent. So I'll turn the alpha to a 0.95, so it is just slightly transparent. And then also let's take the color ramp color and we're gonna put it into the emission color. So we'll open up the emission here and the color ramp color can go into the emission color. And then this strength, I'm gonna turn it up to like a three so that it is emitting a little bit of light. Now really with a real lava lamp, it wouldn't actually be emitting out light. There would actually be like a light here which would be shining up. But again, we're using Blender EV so you kinda of have to fake the lighting. So I found that this is a good effect to make the wax look brighter. So I'll press Alt H to unhide the other objects and then we'll go back Back over here to the layout. Let's also add a camera. So I'll go to the add menu and we'll go down here to camera. We'll just choose a new camera and then we can move our view to wherever we want the camera to be. And I will press control alt numpad zero. Control alt numpad zero will bring the camera to where we are. And then with the camera still selected, let's go here to the object data properties. And on the focal length here, I'm gonna turn this up to 80. I like that better because it kind of zooms everything in and make things look a little bit more flat. And then also if we go here to the output properties, I want it to be a square image. So on the resolution X and Y, I'm going to make both of these values 1920. So it is a square image. I can also hit G to grab, and then I can double tap the Z key to bring the camera in and out, and also just hit G to grab and move the camera around. Now I wanna add a couple more lights, one up here inside the lava lamp, and then another one down here to add light inside that glass and the liquid. So I'll go to the add menu, and let's go here to light, and I can add an area light, 
We'll bring the area light up on the z-axis. We can scale it down. And then let's click right over here to go to the object data properties. And on the shape here, I'm gonna change it to disc. Disc will make it a circle. And then here on the color, I'm gonna make it like a bright orange color, just like I did for the other lights. And on the power here, I'm gonna turn it to like a 20. So now I'm gonna bring it down and I'm gonna bring it inside the lava lamp and I'll stick it way down here and scale it down. So now you can see that there's like a bunch of bright light there on the top and now there's more light. If I hit the H key to hide it and then Alt H to unhide it, you can see what it's doing. So it really looks like there's light there inside the, the lava lamp and it's shining down there and lighting up the inside of it. Let's also make another one down here. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate. We'll bring it down on the Z axis and then I can rotate it. We'll rotate it on the X axis and I'll type in 180 for 180 degrees. So now it is pointed all the way up. Let's bring it down on the Z axis and just stick it right in here inside the little wax there on the bottom and we can scale it and just make it fit the bottom of the lava lamp. All right, that was pretty good. So now there's more light there. And you can also see that there's more light there actually on those wax pieces. And then I'm gonna go into wireframe and I'm gonna zoom in here and select the top lamp. Let's go back into the rendered view. It is a bit too bright. So let me turn the power down to just like a 10. That is a bit better. It was just a little bit too bright. Let's press control S again to save the project. Now there is a small issue with these lights and that is that when I'm moving around here, you can see there's kind of this little dark area. It's kind of like a shadow behind the glass. And once you let Eevee load up a little bit, it does become a bit more subtle and it is a bit hard to see. But I found that in the render, you can kind of see it better and I just want to make sure to get rid of it so you can't see it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select the glass object and then let's go here to the material settings and we're going to scroll down and under settings there is this show back face. If I turn the show back face off you can see the glass looks quite a bit better. So whereas before it was kind of too red and it was kind of reflecting some things and there were some weird shadows if I turn the show back face off that just looks a lot more clean and you can kind of see the background a bit better. Let's save this again with control s and we are now ready to do the animation. So to do the animation I I will actually go into the camera view. So I'll hit the zero on the numpad to go into the camera view and I will select the glass and we're gonna press H to hide it just to get it out of the way so that I can select the meta balls. So let's click on this button here and this button is gonna turn on the auto key so that it'll automatically add keyframes when we transform the object. So I want there to be 1000 frames. So let's go here to the end frame. I'm going to type in 1000. So the frames will loop once it gets to 1000 frames. So I'm first going to select this small bubble here and I'll hit G to grab and then just stick it right here. And you can see because I had the auto key on, you can see it automatically added a keyframe there in the timeline. So now what I want to do is just kind of animate it so it kind of floats around in a circle. So I'm going to go to roughly about frame 250. It doesn't have to be exact, but just about frame 250 because that's a quarter of the animation and I will hit G to grab and I'm just going to move this little piece of wax kind of right down there. So move it there and then let's go about halfway. So we'll go to about frame 500 and I will move this sphere right up here. So now if we go back here in place, you can see it's just kind of slowly moving around. Then let's go to roughly frame 750 and I will move it up and kind of stick it around here. And then at frame 1000 or actually frame 1001, I want it to be the same frame as frame one. So if I zoom in here, here, you can see that we actually added this frame on frame zero. So if I just select the keyframe, I just want to drag it over so you can select it, hit G to grab, and I just want to move it over to frame one. So make sure it's on frame one. And then with the keyframe selected, I'll press Shift D to duplicate, and I'm going to drag the keyframe over here and stick it at the end. And then if I zoom in here on the timeline, I want to make sure that it's at frame 1001. Now I don't want to put the same keyframe on frame 1000 because frame 1000 is the very end of the animation. And so that way frame 1000 and frame one would be exactly the same. So in the animation loop, there'd be a tiny little bit of a pause where two frames would be the same. That's why the very end keyframe is going to be frame 1001 so it won't actually render frame 1001 because then when it's looping the animation it'll go back to frame one so that way it'll be a seamlessly looping animation so now if I play this, just hit the spacebar to play, the sphere just kind of slowly moves around very slowly. And then you can see it goes back to frame 1000 and it's at the same spot. Now there's a problem with this and that is that it slows down and then stops. You can see if I play the animation at the very end, it kind of slows down. And if you like that, you could leave that how it is, but I want to make it slowly moving the entire time. 
So what I'll do is press the A key in the timeline to make sure all the keyframes are selected. And they are selected if they are the yellow color instead of the white color. And I want to duplicate them and put the same keyframes over here and then also over here. And that way it'll still move. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate and I'll first drag them over here, so farther than the other keyframes. And then I'll zoom in here and I'll hit G to grab and I'll bring these two together. And because these two keyframes are the same, I can just override the keyframe. So I'll hit G to grab and I'm going to drag this keyframe over the first one. So stick it right there. And now if I play this, you can see that it's going to continue to move, but then at the very starting it will stop. Now why this is happening is because there is another keyframe over here. So instead of it slowing down and stopping, it's going to continue to move outside of the timeline. So I can do the same thing over here on the starting. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate. Let's drag these keyframes over here farther back into the negative values. And then if I zoom in, I can hit G to grab. And I'm going to stick this keyframe over the first one so it overrides it. So now if I play through this, you can see that it doesn't stop moving, it stays at the same speed. Whereas before it slowed down, it stopped, but now you can see it is perfectly seamless and looping. And also what's really cool about this is I can press the A key to select all the keyframes, and if I want to offset the animation, I can play this, and then I can hit G to grab, and I can just move this around and I can offset it wherever I want. But because it's looping within a thousand frames, wherever you move the keyframes, as long as they're still here within the timeline's view, then it's always going to loop and it's going to be seamless. So that's really great as well. Let's press Control S to save, and I'm now going to animate this second small one here. So the second one is also going to go in a circular animation. So let's go here to frame one. You can actually click here on the current frame and type one. So it goes to frame one and I'll hit G to grab and I'm just going to stick it about here. And then what I want to do is let's go roughly a quarter of the way, which is about 250. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'll hit G to grab and I'll just stick it about here. Then I can go to roughly 500. So about in the center. So in the center of the animation, I'll hit G to grab and let's maybe put it right here. Then I can drag this over to about 750 because that's about 75% of the way and I'll hit G to grab and we can put it maybe like right up here and then I can go to frame 1001 so you can actually click here on the current frame type 1001 and enter and I'm going to select this keyframe here. I'll hit Shift D to duplicate it, so we're duplicating the first one. Stick it here, and then zoom in and just make sure it is right there at frame 1001. So now if I play through this, you can see this sphere just kind of moves around in a small circle. And then to make it so that it is looping, we'll again press the A key to select all the keyframes, and I'll press Shift D to duplicate, and I'll drag them all the way over here and just stick it right there. Make sure it is at frame 1001. And then again, with these keyframes selected, press Shift D to duplicate, drop them over here in the negative values. You can zoom in here and then press G to grab and then stick the keyframes over each other. So now if I play through this, you can see it continues to move even though it gets to the end and goes back to the starting. And then later on in the video, we can offset the keyframes if we want to, but I'm going to animate the other ones. So let's now click on the medium sized one. So for the medium sized one, I'll again, click here on the current frame, change it to frame one, and I'll bring it down and I'm going to stick it here inside that blob there. So on the bottom, maybe bring it more into the center. All right, go back into the camera view and then I'll go to roughly 250 frames and I'll hit G to grab and I'll stick it here kind of about in the center so it kind of comes up. Then I'll go to roughly halfway, which is 500 and I'll hit G to grab and I'll stick it here into the top. And then let's go to roughly frame 750. That's about 75% of the way. We'll hit G to grab and I'm going to put this one kind of over here. And then to make it a looping animation again, we want to select this first keyframe here. We'll press Shift D to duplicate and we can drag it over here. Let's zoom in here and we want to stick it right here at frame 1001. And then we want to duplicate all the keyframes and put them after and before. So we'll press the A key to select all the keyframes. Shift D to duplicate, stick it here. We can zoom in with the scroll wheel. Hit G to grab and just stick this right there so it's overlapping. And then again, Shift D to duplicate. We'll stick them here, zoom in, and we're going to bring them over and again just overlap the keyframes so that it replaces that keyframe. So now if I play through this again or just scrub through the timeline, you can see that this one just kind of goes around in a circle. Then it goes up here to the top and then goes down here to the bottom one. And it merges with the wax and kind of goes inside that wax bit. 
Let's press Control S to save. Let's now do the next one. So I'm gonna select this large one here and we will go to frame one. Now this one, I'll hit G to grab and I'll bring it right up here. And I can also scale it down a little bit, kind of stick it right there. And what I'm gonna do is just have it slowly go down from the top to the very bottom. But because it's a looping animation, it'll go through here and then be in the bottom wax. So you won't actually notice that it'll jump back to the starting because it's gonna be right up here in the top. So just bring it in and make sure it is well right up here inside this top metal piece. So let's now click here on the current frame and we're going to type 1001. I'll hit G to grab and we're going to stick this right down here in the very bottom, bring it down here and just stick it in there. So then as it goes up, it's just going to slowly go through there and then it will loop and then come back to the starting. Now I do want to have it kind of randomly move around a little bit just to make it look like it's kind of floating through the liquid. So we'll go about a quarter way to about 250. I'll hit G to grab, maybe move it about there. Then I'll go to about frame 500. I'll hit G to grab, maybe move it more into the center or over to this side, and then move it over here to about 750. We can kind of move it up here and move it a little bit over, and then just have it go to 1000. So now if we play through this or scrub through the timeline to make it go faster, this one just kind of slowly moves around. It kind of goes back and forth, and then it just goes right in here inside the bottom part of the wax. And this one, because it slows down and stops at the end, we don't need to make it loop by adding in those other keyframes over there. All right, let's select the last one here. Control S to save. So this is the last one that we still need to animate. And this last one here, this big one is kind of going to go in like a circle. So it's going to be going in like an oval shape. So let's go to frame one by just clicking here on the current frame, typing in one. I'll hit G to grab and we're just going to stick it right in here on the top. And then we are going to go to about a quarter way. Actually, first, let's go over to 500. So 500 is halfway. I'll hit G to grab, and we're going to bring it down on the Z axis and just stick it here and maybe bring it forward a little bit and stick it in there inside there. So it's inside the bottom wax piece. Then we can select the first keyframe and I'll press Shift D to duplicate and we'll drag it here to the end. And again, we wanna put it at frame 1001. So it is one after the end frame. So now we just have one keyframe and then a second keyframe and a third keyframe, but I wanna make it actually kind of look like it's going in a circular shape. So now we'll go to in between these keyframes. So roughly about 250. I'll hit G to grab and move it over here to this side a little bit. Then I'll go roughly in the center of these keyframes, which is about 750. And I'll bring it slightly over here. So this way it'll just be a little bit more of an oval shape. So now if I just play through this or scrub through the timeline, you can see it comes down, goes inside here, and then it kind of comes back up. So it'll go around in a circle. And this one, because it kind of starts and ends, we don't actually have to add the looping, so the keyframes here and over here. However, I don't want the two spheres which are moving around, I don't want them to interact with each other, or I want them to be kind of randomly moving at different points. And so I do want to duplicate the keyframes so that we can change the offset. So I'll press the A key to select all the keyframes, and I'll duplicate them and move them over here. And again, we just want to do the same thing, so just override this keyframe, so stick it there at frame 100. 1001. Shift D to duplicate, put that one over there so those keyframes are in the negative values, and then move it over and stick it over the first keyframe. So now if we press the A key to select all the keyframes and move them around, we can move this around wherever we want, and because the animation is looping within a thousand frames, it doesn't matter where it is, even if it's like right in the middle here, it's going to loop. So now we can play the animation and we can really fine tune it and get it to how we want. So I just want to select each one of the meta balls and we can move the keyframes around and then that way it'll make an offset and so they can be at different places. So let's just play through this. I think I want this one at the very starting to be kind of over here. So let's play through that. So now you can see it goes up there and then it kind of comes down here and goes inside and then comes back up. All right, that is looking pretty good. And then the other large one, if I select this one here, this large one, I'm just gonna leave it where it is because we didn't duplicate the keyframes. And this one also is just gonna slowly go down from the top to the bottom. So I'll leave that where it is. And then also the smaller ones, I think we could change the offset. So I'll select this one here. And I kind of want to offset them so they're kind of at different points because right now they're kind of moving around together. You can see both of these small ones, they kind of move around together. So I'll hit G to grab and just move it so the offset is quite different. So it's at a different spot in the animation. So now when I play this, you can see like this one, the small one, it's way up here, whereas this other one, it's down there. So that's looking a bit better. And of course, just make sure that the animation is looping. So when it gets to the very end, it will hop back to the starting. All right, that's pretty good. 
good. I think I can leave the other one where it is. And then also here, this is the medium sized one. I might want to change this, but let me just play it first and kind of watch through and see where it is. I think maybe I could offset it a little bit. So I'll select all the keyframes and kind of move it back a little bit because there's kind of an empty spot here. That's pretty cool. And it's kind of cool that they kind of merge together in the center there. All right, that's pretty good. I like that they're kind of offset. So when this one is going down, this one is going up. So I'll press Control S to save this one more time. I'll press Alt H to unhide that glass. So now let's animate the camera. So I just want to make a very simple camera animation where the camera zooms in and out. So I'll select the camera. And again, let's go to frame one because we want to make this loop as well. So click here on the current frame, type one and then enter. And I can just press the I key and I can just add location, rotation and scale. So it just adds a keyframe here. Now we're going to go to frame 500. So just drag the play hit over here to 500. I'll hit G to grab and I'll double tap the Z key and just move the camera in a little bit and then bring it up on the Z axis. Then I'm going to click on the first keyframe at frame one. I'll duplicate it. We're going to bring it over here to 1001, so drag it over here, make sure it's at 1001, so one after the end frame. And then if I play through this, you can see it'll very slowly just zoom in, and then very slowly zoom back out and then kind of slow down. All right, so let's now go over the render settings. So I'll click here on the output properties, and we can click on this button here to choose an output. And in the project files in this folder here, I will click on the plus here to add a new folder. I can just call it frames. I will go into the folder and we will click on the accept button. Let's also click here to turn off the auto key because we don't want to accidentally add a keyframe. Now here on the file format, you could use PNG if you want to. I'm going to use JPEG because the file size is a bit smaller and then I'll turn the quality to 100. So when we render this, it's going to render out each frame into this folder. So there will be a thousand frames. And then in Blender's video editor, we can compile the frames together and we can add all the sound effects. And we'll actually render it out to a final video in the video editor. So I'll just press Control S to save. And then we will click on render and click on render animation or click Control F12. That is the shortcut. All right, once the animation is finished, I'll just press Control S to save the file again, and then I'll add a new file. So we'll just click on File, and we'll click on New, and we can go down here and add new video editing. And then in Blender's video editor to add in the frames, let's go to the Add menu, and we'll go to Image and Sequence and then locate to the folder where you saved all the frames and make sure the frames are going in the correct order. So you can click here on this drop down and make sure the sort by is by name. So it will start out as one and two and three and so on. Press the A key to select all the frames and we'll click on add image strip. Now the resolution here, we want it to be the same resolution that we rendered. So let's choose 1920 by 1920. And then you can see it's scaled down a bit, but I'll just press Alt H. Alt H will change the scale of that and scale it to the correct size. You can also select the strip and then click on strip and then click on set render size and that will set the render size. So now let's just make the end frame much longer. And then what I can do is press shift D to duplicate and I can drop the strip here. And so now if I just play through this, you can see once it gets to the end, it is a seamless looping animation. So you can continue to duplicate this many times and you can have it loop for as long as you want. Now, if you want to use the same music and sound effects that I'm using, I'm going to be using the garden music from incompetech.com. So I'll have a link in the description to incompetech.com and you can search for garden music and then just download the garden music and then if you are like posting it online make sure that you credit the creator by using those credits right there next to the music so i'm just going to drag in the garden music from my file browser i can just drag it over here and then i can just play through this and i might turn the volume down a bit to like a 0.5 you can just change the volume to whatever you want and you can also click on the display waveform and then you can just move the sound to somewhere where you like and then also if you want to add the bubble sound effect that i added i downloaded this bubble sound effect from freesound.org so it's a free sound effect again i'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download it so i'm just going to drag and drop the bubble sound effect from freesound.org just drop it here and then with the sound effect selected you can click on display waveform and then you can play through it and it kind of is just some nice bubbles in the background now to make it go much slower we can open up the time settings and then we can click on the show read timing keys and this is a new feature in blender 4.0 so if you're using a version older than 4.0 then it might not be here but if you click on show read timing keys there's going to be two keyframes and i'm going to select this keyframe i'll hit g to grab it i'll make it much longer so now when i play this the bubbles are going to 
move slower. But I'm just going to make it kind of about this long, maybe about the same length as the animation, so a thousand frames. And then you can just duplicate the bubble sound effect and just make it as long as you want, and you can move the bubble sound effect where you want. And that's really all I did, so I just made that for the looping animation. And then to actually render it, let's scroll over here on these settings, and on the output here you can set an output by clicking on this icon. And I'll just save the video in my project files, and I'll just call it like video and then I'll click on accept. And then here on the file format, I use FFmpeg video. Let's open up the encoding here. I'm gonna use the container of MPEG-4. I'll use the video codec of H.264. I'll use medium quality and good. And then for the audio here, I use the audio codec of AAC. All right, so then if you wanna save this video editing file, you can, and then just click on render and click on render animation. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the finished project files, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. The links are in the description. And if you'd like to help support the channel here on YouTube, then a great way to do that is by checking out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on that join button. And if you join the YouTube memberships, you'll be supporting the channel monthly and you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube. And you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube to send me a little tip if you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you'd like to learn how to create more looping animations, then definitely check out my Blender looping animations tutorial playlist. The link to that playlist will be in the description and I'll put it right up here on the end screen. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thank you for watching.